Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliances, visit www.alliances.com. Now, back to our super host, David Kogan, founder of Alliances. Oh my God, what a day it is. I mean, we just had on the co-founder of Life is Good, a $100 million company. Later on, we're going to have on the direct source wealth investor relations, Travis Watts at directsourcewealth.com forward slash hero of how we can make money investing into real estate. And there are over 300 ways of investing in the real estate economy. Also, too, is thank you for listening and the incredible feedback that we continue to have from when we had the interview with the president of the National Bar Association. So make sure you go to alliances.com, E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com, the only place where entrepreneurs align. So what do you do when you have a Harvard Law degree? Our next hero is a serial entrepreneur who not only worked at the U.S. Court of Appeals, but has developed multiple tech companies to protect reputations and helping many startups. In fact, it's Michael Furtech who could be reached at michaelfurtech.com. That's Michael, F-E-R-T-I-K.com. Michael, welcome to the show. And tell us about how you came and did develop reputation.com. Thank you very much for having me on your excellent show. I think you do a great service. So, I started Reputation.com in 2006. I had this idea that individuals and businesses were getting a, an unfair shake from the Internet. Their privacy, their data was getting used and abused without their permission. And now, of course, we've seen the world turn that way. I started my first software company back in uh, back 20 years ago, not when I was 19. Uh, so Reputation.com was, my, I guess, my second uh, tech startup. Um, and it's become quite a thing. We've got you know, hundreds of people around the world and... 40, 50 markets, um, uh, selling software from everything to a Fortune 50 to uh, you know, businesses of all kinds, all sizes around the world. So this has been a very exciting journey for me, and I'm very proud of what our team has done. Michael, how do though? How does one get, and then most importantly, keep a good reputation, especially when there's so many, you know, could be potential competitors out there, ex-girlfriends, lovers, wives, husbands, whoever, that, you know, may possibly tarnish someone's reputation? How do we protect that? Well, of course, it's easy to say that the first thing to have a good reputation is to is to behave well. <laughs> um, but of course, in this digital world, or maybe even before then, but especially now in the digital world, that's not enough. People, as you say, competitors, people who kind of have it out for you, can very easily say something, even without thinking about it that hard, and do something very damaging to you. Or it's possible that they could even do something damaging to someone who shares your name. And then when people uh, think about your business or think about you, um, you, can really be, you can really suffer. So it's very important to treat your digital reputation the way you treat your, your personal life, your private life, your professional life. You want to make sure that uh, you dress well when you go to work and, and show a certain uh, symbol, a uh, sort of signal of yourself when you're on your way to work. And also you keep your office, you know, uh, spick and span your place of work stick and span, and your work product really good. Um, it's really important also that that is well reflected on the Internet. The entire body of work uh, is credited well on the Internet, that people are representing you fairly on the Internet. So you've got to be proactive. You have to engage. My company obviously sells software in this space that has been very, very effective. Um, but at the very least, it's something you have to be very mindful of because your revenue is definitely tied to your reputation. Uh, the Harvard Business Review has shown that for every star on a five-star scale, uh, I think it was a restaurant in that case, uh, gets their their revenue goes up or down uh, accordingly by about nine percent. So it's a it's a it's a pretty big impact, uh, a pretty big lever uh, for your business and your your professional life. So it's yeah, it's one of the things you got to really just got to pay attention to. That's it. No no way around. Now you graduated a Harvard Law degree. I mean, one of the most prominent law schools that exists. Probably one of the most difficult law schools. Yet you graduate, you got the Harvard Law degree. Did you end up using it? <laughs> it's funny. I teach now at Harvard Law School. <laughs> so, and now I, I guess I do. I've been teaching there for four years now, and I teach courses on digital privacy and also on uh, entrepreneurship. Um, it's particularly uh, uh, law students are very curious about how to negotiate deals for startups and uh, for rounds of funding and so forth. So I teach a kind of venture capital uh, startup deal 
No. I, I went, uh, I had never taken the bar. Uh, my mom, who has uh, passed away, um, always wanted me to take the bar exam, and I never I never tried, and I, maybe one day I will. But uh, I did do something called a clerkship. So I, I moved to Louisville, Kentucky after, uh, after Harvard Law School, and I clerked for a guy named Danny Boggs, Chief Judge Danny J. Boggs, and he was the chief of the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals of the United States, which is Ken- Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, and Michigan. Uh, he's a great man. Uh, by the way, his real name is Danny. His given name is Danny. He's a real son of Kentucky in that way. His parents did not christen him Daniel. He did christen him Danny. Um, he's a brilliant man and, uh, uh, and, a, and a great great American. And um, and I, I, I used my degree, of course, working for him and clicking. But also, when you're building a software company that might involve regulation or free speech or privacy, uh, I think it's very handy to have an understanding of how these things uh play out in the legal community, how they play out in regulations, how they play out uh, in, uh, in, in different jurisdictions. And to have that in my pocket, I think, has, been, has proved pretty helpful. Oh, absolutely, absolutely incredible. And you're listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliances Hero Show. Make sure you go to alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. The only place where entrepreneurs align because we have, are you ready for this? The founder, creator of reputation.com, Michael Furtick, who can be reached at M-I-C-H-A-E-L-F-E-R-T-I-K. Dot com. Michael, tell me about the projects you're working on now. Thanks a lot. So the last couple of years, two and a half years, I've been spending more time uh, starting new companies and investing in new companies. So I've, I've been lucky to invest in about uh, 35 startups. And uh, I focus on Silicon Valley startups and on startups in Israel. And I have started a few companies and invest in those companies as well. And it's it's uh, it's very thrilling, you know. I've been so focused for so long on building one or two companies. Um, one of the, the there's always a great pleasure in that, and so many of the guests on your show and also your listeners are entrepreneurs themselves. Um, it's a different uh, adventure to be uh, uh, investing in some of these startups myself because I get to meet amazing entrepreneurs who are working on various interesting projects and. Whether or not you invest in their company or even get a chance to invest in their company, one of the great pleasures of this field is just like you, you get to meet all kinds of entrepreneurs from different backgrounds and different uh, walks of life and who have focused on different kinds of businesses. I get this sort of the, the lucky chance to have this mini education, like this mini degree in an hour or two hours uh, talking to an entrepreneur about their business. And they're generally very passionate, very smart, very informed, very knowledgeable, and Lo and behold, they've found a niche, a corner, a big market that I never thought of. And so it's just it's just wonderful uh, just to be able to encounter people like that. And sometimes you get to invest in their businesses, which is great, too. I couldn't agree with you more, and that's why we do this show. So that means, Michael, that I must have maybe 500 degrees. Possibly. You probably have at least 500 degrees. <laughs> some of which you probably really wanted to have and some of which you never knew you wanted to have. Absolutely. So tell us about a couple of the secrets, though, that you look at when you decide and you're comparing of whether or not to invest in a uh, company because that's a serious decision because you know not only with investing but also will require your time, perhaps overseeing things that are going on. You know, one of the things that I think makes entrepreneurs – stand out, uh, as I've encountered entrepreneurs um, for many years, uh, even before as an investor, I, I've, I've had a, um, I've come to the view that the ability to be autodidactic, the ability to teach yourself, to learn on your own, is probably the quality that stands out the most among the really, really remarkable entrepreneurs I've encountered. Some people say grit. No doubt that's important. Some people say it's really, really smart. No doubt that's probably very helpful. But the, the number one thing that I've seen that really makes the very special entrepreneurs very special, um, even outside the context of, of, the, of the prospect of investing, just people I admire, is they are really good at, at learning new stuff on their own. And when you learn something on your own, uh, sometimes you learn it differently. Sometimes you learn it uh, the wrong way, uh, but but somehow, on average, you seem to be able to learn it better and more thoroughly. And the willingness to do that, the willingness to take on the extra tax, the extra job, uh, 
of learning on your own, a new and hard thing, I think is a great gift and a great superpower. And I respect it and admire it a lot. I see it among a lot of people. Uh, I wonder uh, if you would agree with that, seeing all these heroes you meet. Oh, absolutely. There is so much going on. Thank you so much, Michael. By the way, too, he's a best co-author of the book Wild West 2.0 and also The Reputation Economy, so make sure you look that up online. Michael, you help startups grow and have worked to protect people's rights to privacy and reputation. That's a hero, Michael Furtick. He can be reached at M-I-C-H-A-E-L-F-E-R-T-I-K.com. This is David Kogan with Eliances. Eliances.